Hello and welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek and Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller and I've got an extremely um, good tutorial today on making something that is so easy, so effortless, that it's very difficult and that is creating stairs. Well, I've got an imaginary uh, building here. I've got uh, a, a doorway up here and a doorway down here and I didn't create a floor here but you certainly get the, uh, the you certainly get the idea I've got a, a second floor up here and a first floor down here and well I've got doorways now I need to make a stairway to fit um, to bridge this gap here and all the previous times I've made stairs I've never done I've never done it very well uh, it has been horribly imprecise and uh, I've really had to eyeball it, which is probably why none of the models I've made uh, really have stairs in them. So, the the way I've always made a staircase in the past is, well, probably like uh, some of you have done. You create a stair and come over here to Utilities and you want multiple copies. Let's zero that out. Use a negative number here dial in a negative number, adjust the vertical offset, play with the number of copies you want. Okay Gary, what's so difficult about that? I just made uh, stairs there, a staircase in, uh, in seconds. Well, that's not a staircase. Those are steps that are floating in midair. What I have always had trouble with is not necessarily the steps, as you see, I've just made them. They're very simple. But you have to make the staircase. You've got all this area that needs to be a, a, a solid object that will support all the stairs that, uh, that sit on top of it. How do you make that and, uh, and have it look good? Well, if you're like me, in the past, I've always you know, done something like this. Uh, create a, a duplicate of it. Well, select uh, select a face. Okay, there we go. Duplicate that. Select the face on this one. Stretch that up, and you pretty much have to eyeball it. And God, I hated doing that because because uh, it was just imprecise and extremely um, time-consuming as well. So, how do you create a staircase and make it accurate and make it look good? Well, I think I've come up with a good way. And what I like about this method is you can easily create the the stairs to fit any scale that you want to uh, for your scene and you can make the stairs to fit the scene rather than have to make your scene fit your stairs and as we work through this you will see what I mean when I when I say when I said that so let me delete my stairs and let me delete that and we'll get started let me spin around here to a front view I'm gonna come over here to lines I'm gonna grab my polyline I'm gonna click on where in my uh, second floor or where in my doorway I want to begin my staircase and I'm just gonna come down here and click down there on my first floor come back to a perspective view now what I need to do is I need to make sure that my polyline here is lined up um, with where I want it to be on my imaginary second floor. So I'm going to grab my snap align tool, snap on the end of my polyline, snap on my uh, doorway upstairs, and that's what I like. Now let's just make a quick little change here. I'm going to bring this down right where it wants, right where it needs to be. Now. Uh, I'm not going to make a hallway. Um, what I want to do is make like a um, a, f um, a standalone staircase. So I don't want the stairs going all the way into my doorway here. I want it to be. Uh, I want there to be some distance between the bottom of the stairs 
and my doorway. So I'm just going to back this off a little bit. And that's fine. Alright, let me select my curve that we made. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to come over here to Vertex Modeling and I'm going to click on my Increase Smoothing. Now watch my line as I start increasing the smoothing. I'm adding points to my my uh, my line here. Essentially what I'm doing is tessellating it. And you can only hit it so many times, maybe by 10, I, did, I haven't counted, before it stops tessellating. And when that happens, uh, what I'll do is um, where is my dynamic geometry? I'll, um, once it stops tessellating, I'll just disable the dynamic geometry. All right, now I'm going to come here and get a uh, click on my select points. So I'm going to select that point. I'm going to skip one and select that point. Essentially, our stairs will take on this look. Well, if I back up a little bit, and imagine that I have done uh, to all of these other points the same as I have done to these. Those stairs are pretty, pretty tall. And if you bring in a poser figure and look at the scale of the things, well, right now the stair steps are about as tall or as high as his entire calf. And that is not to scale. And uh, it's more like climbing a mountain rather than climbing a staircase. So let's add some more points to this and see what we come up with. So I'm going to come over here to increase smoothing and I'm going to add one more series of points. I'm going to um, commit my dynamic geometry. Now let's come over here and grab some points and get an idea of the scale that we've got here. Enable my body. Okay, uh, if you look at the height of the stairs, it comes right about um, mid-calf, perhaps. It's certainly much better than what we've get what we had. So I like that. I'm gonna go with that. All right. Now with my select points, I'm gonna Control A and select all my points. I'm gonna right-click, use the Advanced Selection submenu come down here to select one and over what we want to do is we want to select every other point so I'm gonna come down here and use the one over function and adjust it until I get every other point selected and that's what I want now I got every other point selected but uh, the points that are selected are the ones that we do not want selected. We want to invert the selection of points, so I'm going to hit I on my keyboard. There we are. Now I'm going to come in here close, and this is the only tricky part of this entire process. Follow along with me. I'm going to try to explain this. Um, it's kind of an abstract principle here. This is essentially the profile of how, what we want this polyline to reflect. If you notice, the, I am controlling this center portion here of my modeling axis. And if you look at the numbers over here in the position, they change based on where the, lo the center location of my modeling axis is in my 3D world. Well, we need to figure out how to arrange all these points so that every angle here is a right angle, 90 degrees, without guessing and without having to eyeball the process. Well, it just so happens that, I'm going to click off, it just so happens that where this center point on my modeling axis is, it happens to be right where a point is. And that's good. We can use that to our advantage. So I'm going to stretch this out till it takes on the approximate shape of where our stair, uh, of what we want our stairs to look like. Now, as I do this, let me undo it. As I do that, watch where this point begins and watch where it ends 
after I have moved it to make our stairs. Roughly right there. Where this point is now is exactly, whoops, is exactly as f along the x-axis anyway of where this point was. I'll do it again. This is vertical. I'm sorry, uh, moving along the x-axis. Now this point that was once here is here, and this point that is here, it was once here. So we have established where we want our x, what the value of our x-coordinate, and that is on that number right there. So I'm going to copy the x position, copy, and I'm going to uh, control Z and undo and get my selection back. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to zero all that out. I'm going to paste that number in there. I'm going to hit enter. And now we've got perfect vertical lines. Well, now we need to come up here and make our horizontal lines perfect. So coming back, look at where the selection is now and look where it will be when we are finished. Right now it looks to be this is where we want it to be. We know where it is. This is where we want it to be. We, we need it to come up. And where we need it to come up is right here where this one is. Watch. When we get to right where we want it to be, it will be right here where this one was. So that's our uh, y coordinate value. So I'm going to copy the Y coordinate, control Z and then do my and, and get my selection back, copy in that Y coordinate and hit enter and now I've got a perfect perfect uh, stair, stair profile. So before I uh, make a mistake I'm going to duplicate that because we will use it for later. Okay, we've got all of the hard work out of the way. I'm going to use my sweep surface tool, validate that. Oh darn, I've made it too large. Um, where I, what I really want is I want the width of these stairs to be exactly the same width as my door opening here. So I'm going to loop this this uh, selection of edges come up here to selection. Now I'm going to change that selection to points. Use my snap align tool and snap it right there. And I should do the same thing with this. Um, uh, points. Snap align. Snap that there. There we are. Okay, we've got all the hard work out of the way. I'm going to spin around over here so I'm looking down the stairs. I'm going to select them, come to Select Faces, and I'm just going to hold down my button and select all the top faces just like that. And I spun around so I didn't have to worry about accidentally selecting any of the fronts. Now I'm just going to copy that selection, copy, paste. I'll hide that for now. I'm going to spin around again and so make that exact same selection all over again, making sure I didn't select any of the fronts. And now I'm going to hit sweep surface and then an extru and extrude straight down. There we are. Well, the top of the stairs look good. Unfortunately, we've got this jagged mess down here on the bottom. So how do we sit and zero all this out or make them all even? And uh, I'll show you an easy way to do it. And I think I may also uh, show you a little uh, tool here that you may not have uh, known before. I'm going to select all of these. Now I want you to I'm gonna draw your attention to this value right up here in the size readout. 91, 0, 2, 3. What that is referring to is that is a numeric value that reflects the offset 
of all of these faces that are selected. If I select this one, there's not going to be any Y value offset. If I select those two, well, it's 4.791. If I select these two, 4.791. If these two, 4.791. If I select all of them, that number reflects the offset of all of them. So, if I select that, hit 0, then I bring, I reduce that offset down to nothing. And we can bring it up here, zoom in, and look at that. It is absolutely flat. And you can certainly check it by coming up here and selecting points and select any number of points you want this will this will always be zero because and this will this number will not change either because they're all on the same plane the x value is changing because it's arranged differently on the x axis or coordinate so flatten that out pretty easily I'll hide those. I'm going to come back to the top of the stairs. Let me hide my doorways here. Come here to select edges and I'm just going to select the front edges of my steps. I'm going to zoom in here. I'm just going to stretch them out a little bit. Make a little lip for my steps. Yeah, that looks good. With that same select, the same object selected, I'm going to hit select faces, control A to select all of them. And I'm just going to give them uh, an offset going the other way. And that looks good. With them selected again, I'm going to extrude upward. Give a little thickness to my steps. And there we are. We've got a nice staircase that was pretty easy to make. And it's And here's the thing that's neat about it. We started at this point, we ended at this point, which is exactly where I wanted it to be. I didn't have to worry about making the stairs and then realizing, oh darn, I really, because if I had done the, uh, used the cubes, made copies using the multiple copies, uh, and made our stairs, and then afterwards realizing, hmm, I really want it to start here. Well, I would have to use the scale tool, scale them all down, which would um, not give it the same uh, look as this. So I think this is a much better way to create stairs than, than, than using any of the uh, other methods. And I got something. There we are. Uh, okay, so those are our stairs. Let me weld those together. Now I'm gonna come back here to this curve that we uh, still got over here, still have over here, sitting on ice, not doing anything for us. And what we can do with that is create a cylinder. And I'm just going to use this as a demonstration. These will be the little uh, supports that will hold a handrail for us. I'm just going to bring it over here to get uh, an idea of scale. And I'm not going to create the whole uh, armrest thing. This will uh, this will suffice. Okay, I've got my whatever this would be called for our stairs. Come over here to utilities. Now I want to copy on support. So I'm going to click on, not that. All right, let me try this again. Uh, copy on support. Uh, let me try this again. Selected, copy on support, there we are, 
come over here to number one. Now I've got a nice uh, vertical alignment. Now I think I've got too many. So I'll delete that one. Click on my group here. Ungroup that. Re-enable the visibility of my stairs. Select all my little whatever these are called. Move them where I want them to be. And now I'm just going to delete the ones that I don't want. And I can hide my curve. So however many I want, I seem to have lots of copies here. I don't know why. I'm just going to delete these and I'll be right back. Deleted the ones I don't want. I'll make a duplicate copy of this thing. And change that to selection. And just make a very quick, crude uh, banister arm, arm support thingy that goes on stairs. Shows you I'm a carpenter. That uh, very technical language that I use. So, this is creating a staircase painlessly and very easily. And look at the scale of it compared to our poser character. It looks darn good. I think in, in reality it may even still be a little large. I could have hit one more level of smoothing uh, on that polyline and ultimately created more stairs, but it's a darn easy and reliable method for creating stairs, certainly more reliable than the method that um, I had, the, the only other method that I knew of, uh, which I demonstrated at first. So I hope you find this useful and hope you can, uh, can use it in your um, hexagon creation. So thanks for watching here at Geek and Play Studios. My name's Gary Miller. Have a good day.